the Satellite Explorer program is a Windows 8 program that will run on any Windows 8 device, whether it's a Windows 8 desktop PC, a laptop, or a tablet. It will also run on Windows RT devices such as the Microsoft Surface. To start the program, click on the Satellite Explorer tile located in the Start menu. When the program comes up, you will see a tracking map over here on the left. The current, your current location is shown by this little yellow square. The location of the satellite is shown by the black circle. The heading of the satellite is shown by the bright green arrow. A bright green line encloses the satellite coverage area. The track for the current pass is shown in the by the dark green dashed line. First thing you should do is set your location. To click on the set location button, this little menu shows up. There's three ways to set your location. You can use auto locate, which is that little button there. And this takes geolocation information from Windows and it shows you the latitude, longitude, and your grid. If you're happy with those values, you can click on use these values. If not, you can click on cancel. You can also enter in your latitude and longitude in these two boxes and click on the use lat launch button and those values will be used. The third way is to enter in a four or six character grid locator and click on the use grid button. After you have entered your location, click on the done button and you'll go back to the main menu. Below the tracking map, we have the sat group pull down box and the sat name box. The satellites are organized into groups once you've selected your group from this box, you can select satellites from within that group over here. So selecting the satellites is quite easy. Selecting a different group, just click on the group. And now we're in the CubeSat group and we can select different satellites within that group. The azimuth, elevation, and range of the satellite are shown in these boxes. Uh, the units currently are English. If you click on the metric click, uh, checkbox down here, they switch to uh, metric. The AOS wait time, which is the um, time, the amount of time you have to wait before the satellite is within range of the selected location that you entered earlier, the length of the pass, the maximum elevation of the pass, the AOS time in local and UTC is displayed here. The location of the satellite, its latitude, longitude, and altitude, as well as the period, is shown here. On the right hand side of the screen we have special functions and the first special function is the help which enables you to refer to this if you need any help with any of these uh, operations of the program. The next choice is the waitlist function and the waitlist function displays the wait for AOS time the length of the pass and the max elevation of the pass for each of the satellites in your favorites group. Now the favorites group is a special group over here and this is one that you can use to keep track of your favorite satellites. There's a lot of them and most likely you're not interested in all of them. Uh, to add something to the favorites group 
pick a group, find something that you wish to add to that group. So we'll add that thing. And then click on the Favorites Add button, which is down here. You get a little message confirming that you have added that. And that's all there is to it. You can remove satellites from the Favorites group by picking the satellite you wish to remove. And then this little button over here you might notice has changed and now it says Favorites Remove. So if we click on that button, we get a little reminder message up here, a little prompt. Click on it and it's removed. Um, the wait list can be sorted by wait time, which is the default, or you can also have the list sorted by satellite name, length of the pass, or max elevation. Now you might notice the, these little buttons up here flash a little bit. Um, this list, this wait list, updates on a regular basis. Um, or you can force an update um, with the start button. You can enter in a minimum elevation over here, in which case only passes above that level or that elevation will be displayed. So let's pick a satellite here that we're interested in and take this guy and then we'll go on to the pass list. Uh, the pass list has a little additional information here and it's used to display upcoming passes for the selected satellite for a given number of days and optionally a minimum elevation. If you don't put a minimum elevation in it'll use zero. So if we wanted to know about passes for the next four days we can enter four days in here and click on the start button and we get a nice list here showing AOS, LOS times, a um, little information about the name of the satellite, uh, the length of each of the passes, and the maximum elevation. Uh, it's displayed in local time. If you want it displayed in UTC, you can just check this box. If you wanted it for a different satellite, you could pick that satellite over here and then click the start button again. The last and uh, most interesting special function is the Bing map function. When you first select that you see a Bing map over here and right now it's just a plain old Bing map. It doesn't really have any special features. There's a little zoom down here so you can zoom in and out. But it's just the basic um, Bing map function. If you click on this track sat button, a couple of things happen. One is the panning of the Bing map has been taken over by the tracking program. So as you switch from satellite to satellite, the location on the big map follows or tracks the location of the satellite. The ground speed or effective ground speed is displayed in this little box. And again, it's displayed currently in metric. If you uncheck this box, it's displayed in English units. You can also switch between aerial and road view. Um, the road view sort of simplifies the display. Um, the aerial view is I think much more interesting. So we'll just try a couple different satellites here and see if we can find one that's in an interesting place. And we'll zoom in here. 
And you'll notice as you zoom in, uh, you can watch the satellite track. And it's actually going quite fast. I mean, it's going over its effective speed over the ground. In this case, is about 15,000 miles an hour, which is quite quick. So don't be surprised if it seems to be moving quite quickly. You may also have noticed that there is a little pointer up here. And this is a compass rose. And north is always up and so on. And then this little pointer here um, shows the azimuth heading from your current location. So if we pick a different satellite here, uh, this one which is coming up on the east coast of the US right now, we can see its heading relative, again relative to our location, is about 100 degrees, which is a little south of, of east. Uh, this really completes the operation of the Satellite Explorer program. Uh, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoy the program. Uh, it is available in the uh, Windows Store. Just search for Satellite Explorer and of course it's free. Thank you. Goodbye.